Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to continue our Summer of Carnage with a mini-series that came out recently that a lot of you have talked to me about in my comments recently and asked me questions about it, like is it in canon and continuity or is it like a drifting continuity? And I think one of you told me that Ryan Stegman tweeted about this and said that it was not technically in canon, that it's all kind of like, uh, you can make up your own mind, you know, kind of thing. It's ambiguous. And uh, so for that reason, it's not like official canon. But what this is, is a series called Carnage Black, White, and Blood. And it's a four-issue miniseries that came out. I have all four issues here. And I'll be giving away digital codes for issues three and four during this episode. So make sure you keep an eye out for when those codes pop up on the bottom of the screen. And the first person to put those codes in, get the comic book. Uh, and yeah, we already gave out codes for one and two in previous episodes. Uh, so I saved issues three and four for this episode. So whoever gets them, enjoy them. Um, like, you know, if you just get one issue, don't feel bad because they're all standalone stories. None of these continue into the next book. They're just three short stories in each book uh, that kind of are the artist and writer's interpretation of Carnage or just a neat idea that they think would be cool to do with Carnage that doesn't affect like the main continuity. So for example, in the first book here, we have Love Story by Teeny Howard and Ken Lashley uh, as the artist, End of the Trail, which is written by Benjamin Percy and art by Sarah Pacelli. And then the last one is You Are Carnage, written by Al Ewing and John McRae, who does the art. Um, and then I'll, you know, I'll try to put up like, you know, the little titles there for like each title as we talk about them and the creative teams as we go through these. Uh, but the first one I think is meant to be set during Maximum Carnage. Uh, so it shows Carnage in the void area with uh, with Cloak and Dagger. Obviously Dagger shows up later on in the story and it's basically Cloak trapping Carnage in a void uh, during the events of Maximum Carnage. And then Max, uh, I guess Carnage is like trying to reach out to Cloak. He's like, hey, you know, let me tell you a love story about uh, Lucius uh, Marius. And uh, he's like, okay. And I, and even I, as the reader, was like, okay, why? <laughs> and Carnage is basically trying to say there's similarities between men who are in love and what they're willing to do to protect the one they love. So Cloak is trying to protect Dagger, who's injured, and Carnage is trying to protect Shriek, who's injured. And they talk, you know, he's basically comparing their story to Lucius Marius. Um, and then so there's some, you know, this alternate world void place that they're in where they're reenacting um, events that Lucius did and then also like what's happening currently with Carnage and Shriek and stuff so if you're a Carnage and Shriek fan it was kind of neat I mean I love the idea of doing a black and white story but everything that's red is red so like Spider-Man shows up red um, and then like obviously Carnage does too but everyone else stays in black and white um, so I kind of like that but overall this story was I mean, I didn't really care for it too much, um, but it was cool to see all these Maximum Carnage characters again for a couple pages uh, fighting because you see Iron Fist and Captain America in the background and other characters that were showed up uh, like Dima Goblin and, um, you know, and Carry On and stuff. So all these characters that were in Maximum Carnage show up. So it's like, okay, that's neat for nostalgia's sake, but the Lucius Marius thing and all that stuff, I was just kind of like, eh, whatever. But, you know, so I, I didn't get into that one too much, but I still did like the art. Ken Lashley is an awesome artist. And I know Teeny Howard, I guess I've only read a couple things by her. Um, so I, I think she's a pretty good writer, at least in my opinion. I just don't remember. <laughs> uh, I don't read any of the X-Men stuff, and I know that's kind of the main stuff she's doing now, I think. Um, but, uh, but yeah, still, I was like, okay, I mean, it's a neat story. It's a cool concept to go back and play in the Maximum Carnage world. But ultimately, I, I was like, eh, it's, it's fine. Uh, this one was my favorite in the book, which was this uh, middle story here by Benjamin Percy. Uh, this one is uh, kind of like a, a Western story. I love the artwork in it. I, I think it looks really, really good. It really clean lines, um, uh, you know, and uh, then, like I said, I love a Western. So you have this guy who's like a sheriff, and he's tracking a killer, and he goes out into, like, the woods. It's like the 1800s or something, and he finds uh, Carnage in a cave, and then he gets into a battle with Carnage, and he's so tough that Carnage decides that he's going to be the new host. So Carnage doesn't kill the sheriff. He ends up bonding with him and then going out and, you know, bonding with the horse and then going off to uh, to be the sheriff of, uh, I guess, the town <laughs> as Carnage and as a Carnage horse. So I, don't know, I thought that was pretty cool. So I dug that. Um and then also the last story, though, I really did not like. Uh, this was by Al Ewing, and it's basically like a, almost like a choose your own adventure. It's like, hey, if you want this to happen, go to this panel. And, if, and so they number all the panels, so it's like a choose your own adventure thing. But it's basically like where you yourself are carnage, and you're working for the government, and the government's making you do things and kill, you know, different villains and stuff like that. 
And yeah, I just, I didn't really care for it too much. I, th I think this is the worst story in, in all of them. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I understand what Al Ewing was trying to do there, but for me, I was just like, if you're going to do a choose your own adventure, make the whole book a choose your own adventure. So that way it's like, turn to this page, turn to this page, but it's like, go to this panel, go to this panel. I'm like, well, whatever. I, I didn't care for that too much. So, um, so yeah, so that was issue one. Um, issue two has stories in here by Donnie Cates uh, and Kyle Hotz is the artist on it called Carnage Shark. So this one I think is where some people got confused where they thought this was continuity, but we'll get into that here in a second. Uh, the second story is uh, My Red Hands by Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cicchetto, who were the guys who did, um, or actually Marco Cicchetto was the artist on Old Man Hawkeye. And Chip Zdarsky, obviously, is writing Daredevil right now. Um, but uh, I was kind of hoping, because Chichetto was on it, that it would be set in the Old Man universe. But it, but it wasn't, I don't think. Uh, so we'll go through that. And then My Name is Carnage is the last story on here. It's by Rom V and Javier Fernandez, who does the artwork. Um, so the beginning is Kyle Hotz doing Carnage Shark. And this, uh, you could assume, this takes place after you know, uh, Venom Island, which was written by Donny Cates. And that's kind of what it's alluding to is I think this is Donny going, well, I never wrapped up the Carnage story. And since Donny's not really involved in extreme Carnage and the stuff that's coming, I think this was him putting his button on what happened to Carnage. And it's pretty anticlimactic. You could have just had Carnage die on the island, uh, I guess, but obviously he couldn't because Marvel had plans for Carnage beyond Venom Island. So this was Donny just going, okay, we didn't kill him in Venom Island. This is how I would kill him, though, post-Venom Island. And it's basically Null's defeated. Eddie is, like, you know, the the new King of Black or whatever. He's new King in Black. He's, like, a god. And he sends... Uh, Carnage finds this freighter ship and goes on board to kill all the people that are working on the ship. And Venom shows up to turn all of them into Venoms. And they fight back and kill Carnage. So that's basically Donny Cates going... Here's my little way of getting rid of Carnage in like eight pages. So again, drifting continuity. So it still follows the, the shark and then the shark coming to the boat. Um, but obviously we know in actual continuity, the shark landed on land um, and was bring, is brought to New York to be like the new candidate running for mayor or whatever. So uh, so we have that or that senator or whatever in, in the, that book. So, um, so yeah, I just thought that was cool. Donnie going like, oh, let's pull a button on this. Uh, then you have Chip Zdarsky telling a story about a kid who is uh, is abused by his stepdad, and he has like a little brother, I believe, and the two of them are abused by their stepdad, and they have a, their dad has like a creature in the barn, and he's like, yeah, or he's like, yeah, he has something in the barn, he's like, don't go in the barn, don't go in the barn, and you think it's Carnage, but Carnage is actually not in the barn, it's living in the house, and it bonds with the little kid and gets him to kill his stepdad, um, and then after he does that, he's like, all right, now that we've got your stepdad out of the way, and I helped you, I helped you kill your demon, you know, you got to help me kill mine. So they go out to the barn and Spider-Man is there. I don't know why Spider-Man is fully black and white, I guess, so they can show that he has blood on him. But in the other story, uh, they had his costume still red, which would make sense. But for whatever reason, he's not uh, red here, just the blood is. Um, but Spider-Man is trying to talk to the kid and saying, like, don't do this, don't kill me. Um, you know, I'm sorry about your stepdad. And the kid ends up breaking free of Carnage. We, well, so we think and Carnage goes and fights Spider-Man in the woods but a trace of the suit is left behind um, so yeah it's, it's, that's pretty cool that, that I thought that was a neat story and I thought Chip Zdarsky did a good job and then this last one uh, this last story here by Ron V um, is basically it reminded me of the movie The Thing where you know it comes down to two people left uh, and, and you have like McCready and um, and Duke no was it Dukes I can't remember I can't remember the other guy's name um, uh, so played play, play by Keith David uh, but it's just the two of them um, at the end and they're like oh are, are you the thing and he's like I don't know he's like I guess we'll just hang out here and find out wait to see if you play the video game you know the conclusion of that I guess I don't know if that's continuity or not but they played off that in the, the video game um, but in this, it's basically that's what happens. And you it's a group of people that were trying to survive this blizzard or out in the woods and they're getting killed one by one. And it's kind of like, who's the, who's the thing? You know, who's Carnage? And uh, and it turns out, obviously, it's it's one of them. And then they go to kill the other one. But they see that uh, McCree, uh, not McCready, but McCree is uh, is worthy, a worthy host. And so Carnage bonds with McCree. And at the end, they're like, all right, we're going to drive into town and, and cause some more carnage. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's kind of that there. It was that, that little short story by Ron V. I thought that was pretty good. I thought that issue was, was a pretty decent issue. Like, um, you know, the shark story by Donnie 
and uh, and the stepson story or the son with the stepdad story and uh, and then that at the end I was like okay these are pretty good I think the Ron V one was if I had to choose was my least favorite but it was a tough choice I thought they were all pretty decent um, and then boom there you go there's the code for issue number three because we're about to talk about it uh, this is a uh, Carnage Black White and Blood number three there are stories in here by Dan Slott which is called No Survivors with art by Greg Smallwood uh, Sea of Blood by Carla Pacheco uh, who's the writer and Chris Mooneyham from the Scream book. Uh, as the artist. Uh, I think Chris did the screen book, one of them. And then The Convention by Alyssa Wong and art by Gerardo Sandoval, who again, been an artist on Venom and Symbiote stuff before. So No Survivors was pretty neat. It starts off and there's a metal band. I think it's called, the band's called uh, Brain Flare. I think that's a reference to a band that popped up in Spider-Man comics before, but I can't remember. So I'll let you guys tell me, is that one of the rock bands that was in earlier Carnage and Spider-Man stories? I know there was a band that played at one of their concerts where Venom fought Carnage um, in the first, you know, Savage Genesis, but I can't remember if it's Brain Flay or not. And I thought I was, I was going to try to look it up and I said, you know what, I'll just wing it. And if I'm wrong, then you guys can correct me. But, uh, but Carnage says, I've been a fan of you guys for a while. So I don't know if it's a real band in real life or if it's a band set already in the Spider-Man universe, but either way, you guys let me know if that's a thing or not, or if it's just not maybe Dan Slott just said whatever it's not a big deal I'll just make up a band um but Carnage kind of says I'm, I'm a fan of yours and so then there's a, a slaughter Carnage shows up at a concert and I guess kills a bunch of people uh so so you see them killing band members but one guy's left alive and you kind of see him he feels like he's losing it um he he's got he's coughing up blood sometimes and he's he, you know he gets like a nosebleed and stuff and he's every time he looks at the blood it looks like it's making Carnage's face and so he's starting to like you know, slip, you know, and then you find out that maybe, just maybe, there is a sliver of the Carnage symbiote on him, whispering in his ear, driving him crazy. Um, so I, I thought this story was really good, and uh, I think it ends pretty strong, and it gets to the point where it goes back to Ravencroft, and they're like, you know, how'd you do it, Cletus, how did you, you know, um, you know, get to Blake Bellman, the guy in the band, like, how did you get to him and ruin his life? Uh, once again, Spider-Man is not red here, by the way. I don't know why that's inconsistent. I don't know why that doesn't make any sense. Um, but uh, they go to Cletus, and Cletus is like, who's Blake Bellman? So a little mystery, you know, kind of ghost story thing. I'm like, all right, that's fine. Uh, this one, I think, was this, my favorite story in the book because I like westerns and I like pirate stories. Um, so that's why I liked uh, the Ben Percy story in the first issue with uh, the, the western kind of sheriff thing. This is pirates out on the open sea, and, uh, and they uh, come across Carnage. So it's called Sea of Blood. And I think the art's great by Chris Mooneyham. It looks really fantastic. Uh, Shriek is in it, uh, and she actually betrays Carnage, um, you know, when, they're, when they find the treasure, and she's like, this could change my life. And then, of course, he reveals that uh, he's, you know, a full-on symbiote, and he's starting to attack his men and turn on them uh, with this treasure. And then across the way, there's Admiral Brock. And Admiral Brock is showing up with his ship uh, of uh, colonists, I guess. You know, they're, they're not uh, pirates. Um, but they show up to battle and they get in a pirate ship battle with cannons firing at each other, uh, but then also symbiotes fighting each other. Uh, so you actually find out that Brock has a symbiote as well and him and uh, Carnage battle each other to the death. Uh, it's pretty awesome, or at least uh, so you think, <laughs> of course, right? Because Carnage always finds a way. Um, so again, just like a cool ghost story on the open seas, but there's like narration and it's like... Uh, you know, we sing heave ho, heave ho, till next the carnage come round, you know, kind of thing. I think Carla Pacheco did a good job writing this one. I, I had a I had a blast reading it. So this was really cool. Um, this was my least favorite one in the story. Uh, Comic-Con. This story takes place at Comic-Con, apparently. Um, it doesn't say San Diego Comic-Con, because uh, I think that's trademarked, but... It does, but they have, you know, Carnage has a giant bag here and all these kids dressed as different versions of Spider-Man are coming up saying, hey, Carnage, we want to get pictures with you. We want to get pictures with you and, and other symbiotes around the convention. So, um, you know, so, you know, please take a picture with us. And he's like, okay. So it seems like it's just a dude in cosplay. And then all these cultists show up and say, hey, you're dressed as Carnage, come with us. And he brings them to a room where um, there's a cult. Everyone's hooded and stuff. They have the spiral masks on. And uh, there's a bunch of people dressed as Carnage. And they're like, we need a sacrifice. And so they all stab this guy to death. And the other carnages are like, oh my God, are you going to, is that what you're going to do to us? And they're like, yes, we got, you know, they start laughing. They're like, this is the sacrifice to carnage, the sacrifice to carnage. And then it turns out the guy they're stabbing to death is actually carnage somehow, even though it's, I don't know if it's Cletus, um, but it is carnage. <laughs> and so, uh, so then he, you know, kills the, the cult members and lets the, uh, 
I think lets the others go. I can't remember. I mean, I mean it's kind of ambiguous. Yeah, I think they all run off. So, um, and then he goes and um, signs some autographs. Oh, that's not them running off. That's the kids dressed as Spider Man. Never mind. So, uh, so yeah, and he goes nice costumes by the way when he he picks up his bag and goes back to the convention. So. Yeah, this was kind of goofy. I mean, I, it's a neat concept, I guess, but it's very meta. It's like, oh, Carnage exists in the comic world, and then someone at Comic-Con who likes Carnage becomes Carnage, and it's like, I don't know. I like meta stuff sometimes, but that one lost me a little bit. And again, if I just had to pick a least favorite, I would probably pick that one, but I still like the artwork, and it's a neat concept. I just, I was just kind of like meh about it. Um, but then, okay, we have the last issue, finally. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this under 20 minutes. Uh, this is the code for issue four. So first person to put that code in gets the copy of Carnage, Black, White, and Blood. So just go to that website, put in that code. First person who does gets the final issue here, which we have a story called Carnage Beyond, written by Ryan Stegman and art by Joe Bennett. Uh, we have Skin Deep by Declan Shalvey as the writer and Stephen Mooney as the artist. And then we have The End of Humanity by Ed Breeson uh, as the uh, writer and Scott Hepburn as the artist. And the first one was neat because I think it's clearly something that uh, Ryan Stegman wanted to tackle, which was whatever happened to that other universe where Dylan was null, um, you know, and whatever happened to that and weighing and stuff, who was agent anti-venom, what happened to those characters? It's surprising me because I thought Ryan Stegman being a big fan of uh, Kane and, and Scarlet Spider and stuff, I'm surprised he didn't write a story with Kane set during uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, Absolute Carnage event. Um, or not Kane, but maybe Ben Riley, and Kane was there. I thought he would have done something like that because he was begging Donnie to use those characters and Donnie didn't or wouldn't. So I'm just like, why didn't Ryan? First chance he had and he didn't do it. Um, but we do get an Anne moment here, but we find out it's not really Anne. Uh, so what it is is that Dylan from the other world, he uh, awoken after Carnage bonded with his comatose body and it caused him to kill that version of Anne Wang. So that other mom that I guess Dylan spent a whole year with, with Eddie, I guess she's dead. Again, this isn't continuity. This is just a, a button up of what could have been, I guess, if if they could if they stayed on the book longer. So Ryan Segman came up with a story where uh, Dylan from that world that was null, he bonded with Carnage and comes into our universe and attacks our Dylan, who is now Venom, and so it's Venom versus Carnage, but both are Dylans as the hosts uh, from different worlds. Um, so yeah, I was like, okay, the neat concept, but uh, you know, I, I don't know. I was just kind of like middle of the road on it. Uh, you know, it, it's a neat concept though. And having a Venom versus Carnage, which is obviously like the big battle, you, you know, you always want to have is Venom versus Carnage, but having the host be two Dylans, I thought that was kind of neat. And then in the end, you actually find out that the God stuff got was too much for Eddie and uh, and Dylan. After he killed other Dylan Carnage, he ends up um, going to say goodbye to his dad as his dad is um, slowly passing away. So I was like, okay, so it's just Ryan Stegman's way to button up that stuff. Um, this middle story was, I don't know, I felt kind of iffy on it. It was basically a version of Cletus, I guess, walking around thinking everyone's you know infected with something and he uh is killing them and he sees like a monster killing them and then at the end he finds out that you know the monster's inside of him it's his blood uh and that's pretty much the story i mean it's it's i don't know it was kind of straightforward and whatever i don't know i didn't like this one too much i think this was the weakest one in the book to me um but the art's nice the art is really nice and at the end you have this beautiful shot here that says we are carnage and again of course carnage wouldn't say that because he he says i am carnage but this is a, a different take on it, obviously. This is him realizing the blood is alive. And so he's saying, we are Carnage. Um, so yeah, I guess. I think, still feel like he should say, I am Carnage, but it's cool. It doesn't matter because the image is beautiful <laughs> with the moon in the background. I just loved it for that reason. Um, and this last one takes place like way in the future. And it's like a group of people that are scavenging Avengers Tower and going through like looking for um, any kind of weapons or anything. One guy finds Cap's shield in there. And, uh, and then one guy finds a vial of Carnage's symbiote that was like, you know, locked up at, like in a safe or something. And uh, and he was able to retrieve it because the safe, after years of corrosion, I guess, the safe fell apart or started to fall apart or withered or something. And uh, and he just finds the vial there. Um, so he's like, okay, it's still sealed. So what is it? And he opens it up and he becomes Carnage and, uh, and it starts attacking his friends who are in his squad, one of which is the guy with the, the Captain America shield. So they get into a, a fight, which is pretty cool. Um, but in the end, it's, uh, you know, Carnage 
just devours everyone. And then he finds out where that search party came from. Like, obviously, they had to, because there was, there's some kind of base outside of New York that they must have come from. And that's what he goes and finds at the end of the story. And he's like, okay, I'm going to, he's like, great, I'm home. I have plenty of food to eat for me and, you know, my new host uh, or whatever. So, uh, so that's how that book ends. So overall, like, these were fun. Like, I, I mean, it, I understand the concept. I know they are doing that with Deadpool, I think, coming up. And they did it with Wolverine where they do these black, white, and blood. And I think DC does something different. They do, like, black, white, and gold or something like that with, like, Wonder Woman and, and some other characters. So it's a neat concept. I love black and white stories. So that pulls me in uh, every time. That's why I read the Wolverine one. And that's why I'll probably, when it goes on sale digitally, I'll probably read the Deadpool one too. I like black and white stories and focusing on the color red as being like the contrast of the extra contrast, the other layer um, is kind of neat, especially in a story like Wolverine where he's cutting people and blood is shooting everywhere. And same with Deadpool, his costume's red, but everything else is black and white. Um, I, I, like the, I like stuff like that. I think that's cool. But at the end of the day, it's like none of them are really stories that add a ton to the continuity. You can argue that maybe some of the stories could fit into continuity, but I don't know if that's the overall plan. I think in the Wolverine one, there were some stories that were kind of meant to be a drifting continuity. If you don't know what that term means, it means like it could most likely happen, but it's up to the reader. And if someone retcons it later, it's not that big of a deal. That's kind of a drifting continuity. Um, kind of like when Kevin Smith wrote Batman, The Widening Gyre. And he brought Silver St. Cloud back, you know, basically to kill her, <laughs> I guess. Um, he uh, That story is a drifting continuity. It's up to you if you want to actually consider it canon or not. Um, so that's what I feel like some of these could be considered, but mostly they're not continuity. I think this is just everyone having fun with the concept of Carnage and just doing things differently um, if they had any kind of creative... I guess, control over the character, what they would kind of do with it. And I felt some of these ideas were neat. Some of them were just kind of mad to me. But I didn't think anything in here was bad, in my opinion. I didn't think anything in here was, like, terrible writing or terrible art. I thought the art in all these stories were great. And I thought the writing was, like, middle range to, go to good, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. So I think if you haven't read this yet, I mean, obviously I spoiled the whole thing for you to, the, to an extent. But if you're a Carnage fan and you just want to see other interpretations of Carnage... I think it's a worth you know worthwhile to get uh, personally. So if that's up your alley, if this anything I said here sounds like up your alley, please go buy this. I think the trade is going to be coming out soon, and I would recommend picking it up. I think it's a, a great addition to a Carnage collection if you're a Carnage fan. And um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, based on each story that I broke down or kind of talked about briefly, um, I'd love to hear what you think of those stories. So if you have a favorite or a least favorite, whatever it is in each issue or just overall. Let me know down below, and as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. And before this turns into a 30-minute video, I'm going to walk away now. Thank you so much for checking us out, and we will continue Carnage Week and the Summer of Carnage with, uh, uh, I guess next I'll be doing either another Extreme Carnage book, um, which hopefully I'll pick up the new copy of, or I'll be doing um, uh, the, the Red Goblin story. I think that'll be coming up next uh, soon, too. And then we'll do Chillers Volume 3, or Part 3 of Chillers. And then after that, we should be pretty much caught up. I'll have to do the Ravencroft miniseries sometime this month, but I'm going to do that in the middle of doing the Spider-Man stuff because we got to get to Peter Parker in the years where he had the black costume. So that'll be coming up soon too. So hopefully that if that's up your alley, stay subscribed and uh, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And as always, I'll see you all in the future. Peace.